Hi, I'm Maureen, and I ask a lot of questions. So I made this podcast to have a space to discuss and explore the hard questions about Christianity and faith. So join me on my quest for Christ. Hi, guys. It's Maureen here. Thank you guys for joining me once again on Quest for Christ. So today is going to be a much shorter episode. I'm really just going to be talking alone about um, basically why I trust the Bible. I thought this was an important video to make because I speak about the Bible a lot. I quote it a lot. And I thought it was interesting to kind of put the groundwork out there as to why I do that, why I trust the Bible as a reliable source, why I think it's valid and why I think it's reliable. So let's jump into it. So the first thing is the Bible has more ancient manuscripts than any other text in antiquity. The second place is Homer's Iliad with over 600 manuscripts. Now the old, uh, sorry, the New Testament, I'm only going to be talking about the New Testament for the purposes of this video. The New Testament has over 23,000 in total, over 23,000. That is an embarrassment of riches. Now, what does that mean? That means that we can trust that the story that we have in our hands today is the same or very, 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 very similar to the original story. Why? Because having so many manuscripts means we can compare and make sure that these stories are the same. Are they going to have small nuances? Yes, they will. Does that mean that? they're not reliable or that they're not telling the truth? No. First of all, those nuances don't affect the core of the stories. The stories are the same. Second of all, we would expect to find nuances among the gospels, among the manuscripts and things like that because it's humans writing them, right? And among the gospels, for example, J. Warner Wallace puts it the best. So I'm going to quote him. He is a homicide detective who is also um, an apologist, very smart man. And he says, those differences might appear to be contradictory, but they're actually kinds of variations we would expect when two people have varying interests and perspectives. Have you considered the fact that the Bible writers were real people who had personal interests and perspectives that may have shaped how they reported their observations. So that is why any kind of nuances between the stories, um, they don't really bother me. In fact, I feel that it gives me a more complete look of what ha actually happened. In addition to having so many manuscripts, we also have very early accounts of what happened. So for example, um, Paul, the writings of Paul are dated to approximately 50 AD. Jesus died in 30 AD. So that means that the writings of Paul were still were put out around the time where there were still eyewitnesses to the events of Jesus's life and teaching and ministry. So why is that important? Well, that's because if his writings came out at a time where there were still eyewitnesses around. There were people around to refute anything he would have said that would have been incorrect or wrong or a lie and also corroborate the things that he would have said that were true. So there was time and people around to be able to um, change or fix any false teachings that he would have written down. The other thing is that within the writings of Paul, there are actually um, older oral creeds that were mentioned in his writings, for example, in 1 Corinthians 15. And that creed um, talks about Jesus as our savior who atoned uh, for our sins and who died and rose again and was seen by many people. And so I would recommend going to read that. It's really interesting. And what does that mean? That means that even before the writings of Paul, there were oral creeds that were going around that affirmed the faith and the atonement in Christ. So that is why we can trust it because um, it's very, very early and there's a lot of manuscripts to, to uh, support. Now, what about the gospel writers? So the gospels themselves were written by first or second hand eyewitnesses to the events. What do I mean by that? 
So the writer of Matthew is believed to be Matthew, the tax collector, who was actually one of Jesus's 12 disciples. So very, very close to the actual events and was an eyewitness to the events. The other one is um, John Mark. Now, John Mark was a traveling companion to Peter. And if you know who Peter is, he was in Jesus's inner three. Peter, James, and John were Jesus's like homies like his like I mean they were all his homies but his like how would I explain this his his inner three okay so his rock he calls Peter the rock right the rock of the church so John Mark was Peter's traveling companion the other one is Luke Luke was Paul's physician now, Luke is interesting because as a physician, he meticulously went around and made sure that the accounts and the details that he had were accurate and correct. And it's really interesting if you read the first part of Luke, um, you'll see that he actually talks about that. Um, so I, I highly recommend checking it out. It's interesting. The other part, the other um, gospel writer, sorry, is John. Sorry, <clears throat> is John. Now, John, I remember reading that there was some question about whether it was John the Elder or John in Jesus's inner three, but they are, most people believe that it was John within Jesus's inner three, though that's Matthew and John or firsthand eyewitness accounts to the events that happened, very close people to Jesus. And Luke and um, Mark were secondhand kind of accounts or even thirdhand, I guess Luke would be called. Uh, but uh, there were people also who really wanted to maintain the integrity of the story. Now, I want to also address that people kind of are, I've heard some people mention that, you know, uh, these disciples had fame and money to gain by doing this, by lying and, um, you know, perpetuating these ideals or the church. That is, that couldn't be further from the truth. Okay. The disciples they only got persecuted and killed for what they did. They didn't get any money. They had no money. They had no belongings, nothing. Um, they were tortured and killed for what they believe. And I've heard it said that some people thought that they were, they had stole the body of Jesus from the tomb um, and that Jesus had not really resurrected. That is, that's not true because most people, okay, many people may die for something they believe is true, right? But most people will not die for something they know is a lie. If the disciples knew that Jesus was dead, why go through the trouble of pretending like he's alive and then getting yourself tortured and killed? It, it doesn't make sense, right? So that is why I, I trust the words of the disciples and what they say. Uh, same thing with Paul. Paul was actually a leader um, in Rome and he was actually torturing and persecuting the, the followers of Christ. And then on, his, on the way, he was on the road, and uh, on the road, he had a vision, and he saw the risen Christ. And as a result of that vision, he actually like, changed his whole life, and he became a follower of Christ. And as of that vision, he actually started to become like persecuted himself and killed himself. Um, he, he didn't kill himself. He also got killed. He got persecuted and killed for, for the truth, which is that Jesus Christ is alive today. Hallelujah, by the way. Um, <laughs> the other thing, okay, I'm just going through my notes here, guys. Bear with me. The other thing I wanted to mention was, in addition to the biblical accounts um, that we have, we also have corroborating evidence outside of the Bible by ancient non-Christian sources. So these are people who are not sympathetic with Christianity um, and they have written about Jesus and they said that he was a teacher. They said that he was killed, uh, buried. And then on the third day, his tomb was empty. Ooh. Now they think again that they, the disciples may have stolen the bodies, but I've told you why I don't believe that to be the case. It just doesn't make sense. Um, they really had no motive or no incentive to steal the body and pretend that Jesus was alive. Uh, so those sources you should look up as well if you're interested. Uh, they are Tacitus and Josephus. Those are just some of them. Those are the ones that I've come across the most, um, most commonly spoken about. The other thing I wanted to address kind of at the end 
because I feel like if anyone does their research, they might come across this and they might have some questions, are the Gnostic Gospels. So things like the Gospel of Thomas or Judas or those kind of Gnostic Gospels. Gnostic Gospels are a co collection of books that were found um, in Egypt in 1945 or something like that, 1940 something. And um, they were a collection of books written much later than the canonical gospels, probably about the third or fourth century, except for the Gospel of Thomas, which is probably about second century. Um, and this was a group of people who believed in uh, secret knowledge and Gnostics, Gnosticism means knowledge. They believe that we were saved through some secret knowledge and not through the atonement of Christ. Um, and if you read it, it's very different <laughs> than the canonical gospels and it doesn't match what the story of the canonical gospels is saying, which is the atonement of Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and his resurrection, um, all of that. Like if you read the entire New, God, New Testament and even the Old Testament, the entire Bible, it's a collection of books that basically tells one coherent story and one coherent message. So the, the Gnostic Gospels don't fit into that. They were kind of a fringe group. Um, and they started writing books to kind of match what, what they were saying. And they would take, pick and choose things from the Gospels and put it into their books to kind of make, make, make it a little bit more, seem a little bit more legit, right? And if you think about it, people still do that today. <laughs> I mean, with text, people take information, some of it is true, some of it's not, and they mix it together, so you're not quite sure if what they're saying is true or not. Um, the last thing I wanted to say about this uh, is I, I trust the Gospels because I trust Jesus, and Jesus said that scripture is the word of God, and if he says it, then it's true. So this is um, another thing is that <clears throat> there's really great evidence. So this is going to be for probably another video, the evidence for Jesus outside the Bible. I mean, we just talked a little, I met, I touched it very briefly, Tacitus, Josephus. Um, there are people outside the Bible who have spoken about Jesus. And if he says that scripture, if he holds scripture highly and says that it's the word of God, then so do I, you know what I mean? Like, I, you take Jesus's words as God talking to you. So I don't, I, we don't, we don't play with those words. You know what I mean? We don't play. If Jesus says X, then it's X. Okay. Um, so that's basically all I wanted to say. I really appreciate you guys listening to this video. I hope it kind of has given you some information about why I trust the Bibles and why maybe you should also trust the Bibles. I hope that it sparked your interest in the Bible. Maybe you want to look into it a little bit. You never ever thought of it in these terms. Um, you never thought of the writers or all of that stuff. Really good. Um, I just want to recommend a few things for you. One, go check out the Bible Project on YouTube. They are fantastic. They do animated videos that are so user-friendly, so well explained. They're like experts, they're so good. Definitely, definitely check out the Bible Project. Number two, the Chosen TV series. Ugh. If you have never thought of the Bible characters as real people, you gotta go watch this series because it puts them in like real life, like they feel more real than any other series I've seen about Jesus. Jesus is not this very stoic, like character who doesn't smile, doesn't laugh and is very serious. He's like a human. And I love that about the series because he did come down as a human. So um, yeah, I definitely wanted to just plug those. I, I'm not affiliated with either one of them, but I just really, really love them. And I really wanted to uh, send people over there because I thought they could be very helpful. Thank you guys so much for listening to me ramble on. I'm sorry that it was just me talking today, but I appreciate your time. I appreciate you coming and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.